a teacher, and I'm afraid I can't possibly stand in front of so many people and not invite some form of participation in what's going on. I haven't warned the chair about this, but I just want to do some very simple things, because I am sick to death of turning on my television every morning at the moment, especially this week on BBC, if you watch their breakfast TV programme, they are saying to us, we all know this government has to cut public <laughs> services, how would you get the private sector to replace it? And I just want to go mad, I want to strangle these people. There is no need to cut the public sector to bits, education, health or whatever. We need, we need more jobs in the private sector. The rich bastards are not paying their tax. We need more PCS members collecting the tax of those people who haven't paid it for years. We need, at a time of a rising birth rate, we need more teachers and clerical workers and assistants in our schools, not less. At a time when health is being hit in all kinds of directions, we need more people working in our hospitals. I'm sick of this, and what I'd like to do is a very quick straw poll. It involves you just putting up your hand, yes or no. And the first question is, because I'm also sick of opinion polls, you get all these opinion polls saying how happy the public is with this new government and how it's going along and all the things it's doing. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess that each one of you pretty much is a member of the public. In this part of the world, in this little bit of North West London, North London, you are the public. I'd like to know, in answer to this question, do you think, yes or no, that all those people who have avoided paying their tax or evaded paying their tax should do so immediately. Can I have a yes and a show first of all? Yes. yes? Okay. Are there any no votes for that? People who don't want those people to pay their tax. Um, are there any abstentions? Anybody not sure? Anybody not too sure? Okay. Go over here. Uh, very brave of you. Um, okay, I think we've got a fairly clear, you know, if, if there was an opinion poll which actually asked that question, of course it doesn't, they ask questions like, don't you think this government's doing a really good job? And people say, well, I suppose so, but I'm not really sure, and, you know, maybe this, that, and the other. It's going to take us to change that opinion poll, and I think we can do it. I think we really can turn it round. The other question I would ask, uh, in my very quick list, hopefully, is do you think that income tax levels for big business and individuals should be returned to the levels that it was under Margaret Thatcher before both the Labour government and the current Tory government reduced it. Do you think it should be returned to that level? Can I have a show of hands please? Yes or no? Is there... Okay, thank you. That's fairly good for yes. Is there anybody who wants to put their hand up for no? More. More. You want it to be more? Okay. <laughs> That's more with a qualification. Look, the point is this. If we are prepared to come out on a night like this, find this room, come together, we have, as John suggested, a brilliant start and we can try and overcome all of that stuff. I want to talk quickly about the class war as it hits education and we shouldn't think of academies and free schools being anything less than that. Anybody who thinks that these academies proposals and the free schools proposals are about efficient education or quality education, I'm afraid is living in cloud cuckoo land. It's about trying to decentralise some of the management of these schools so that that decision, when the, when, 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 the, when the cuts come and less money is coming through to schools, it's passing the buck, basically, for the cuts are going to come. Because the biggest myth that's going around, and it's why quite a lot of the head teachers and some governors are going, well, you know, there might be something in it for us. There isn't going to be anything in it for academy schools. Whether you're an academy school, a foundation school, a community school, a voluntary aided school, it is all dependent on public money coming into your hands. The fact that you will be a private group of people able to disperse that money, uh, whereas down the road it might be a church dominated governing body or an elected governing body, doesn't make a bit of difference. The government has lied on its website, they've put up a ready reckoner of how much money each school could get if it opted to become an academy. It's based on lies. It has been exposed as such by people who have many, many years working in local authorities. It's an old trick. You double count 
certain sets of money. So some of the money that normally comes through to a local authority, which is kept behind to, to provide general services like special needs transport, uh, some of that might be trickled down to an individual school under the academy scheme. But they've counted that plus another whole amount as well. And in fact, the only way that any academy might succeed if it gets some more money is by other local schools having less. There is the most stupid comment this week. I will try and wrap up on this particular comment. <laughs> Earlier on, I was thinking I'll start this meeting with a joke, and then I realised there isn't a bigger joke than Michael Gove, the person who's in charge of education, for God's sake. I mean, he looks like a ventriloquist dummy, and he acts with about as much intelligence. He's so hollow-headed, it's unbelievable. But he's, far, he's not far behind his, his, his Nick Clegg, because, of course, on Tuesday, his party pulled the leg out of one of their key policies, this policy on academies and free schools, and told him where to go with it. And his quote to The Guardian afterwards was, I want to be really clear about what the government is proposing. It's not Labour's Academies programme, a few schools singled out for preferential treatment. We're opening up the option of academy freedom to all schools. My vision is that every school in time will be equal. Every school, equally free. Cloud, cuckoo land, rubbish. The idea that the government has and the Tories have is trying to create a two-tier system in education the same way as they're trying to create it in health. A few schools which seem to have uh, plenty of uh, apparently excellent students and so on and facilities and they're going to have bog standard and worse than bog standard schools for the rest of us. It is in everybody's interests in this room to make sure that if your governing body, if you are a parent, or if you, your governing body also, if you are a member of a teacher or a school union, pass a motion in your school to oppose the establishment of an academy. Even if 18 schools in Barnet are interested, there is absolutely no way they're all going to get to become academies. And the one or two that might will draw money away from the others. Unity, as ever, is crucial here. The, the, all the teacher unions need to stand together with their colleagues in the non-teacher unions, and the parents and governors of this borough need to stand united behind them as well. I hope, uh, and obviously I will answer questions afterwards, but I hope colleagues locally are able to go forward now and, and, and make those defences of our state education system. The NUT